Wouldn't it be great if we could predict which patients will experience larger LDL cholesterol increases after adopting a low-carbohydrate diet? What can be done if this phenomenon occurs? This video abstract will present information from a newly published paper from Current Developments in Nutrition, titled Elevated LDL Cholesterol with a Carbohydrate-Restricted Diet, Evidence for a Lean Mass Hyperresponder Phenotype. The popularity of ketogenic and low-carbohydrate diets is increasing as individuals adopt these forms of therapeutic carbohydrate restriction to treat a wide range of chronic metabolic diseases, most commonly obesity and diabetes, but also neurological and neurodegenerative conditions, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, and other inflammatory or autoimmune disorders. But despite the fact that carbohydrate restriction shows promise for so many medical conditions, there are obstacles preventing the adoption of carbohydrate reduction among the medical community. One major obstacle is the fear of rising LDL cholesterol, an important risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Now, while many people on low carbohydrate diets, most people actually, do not experience increases in LDL, some experience extreme increases in LDL. And the million dollar question is, what sets these people apart? In this study, we investigate that very question by performing a hypothesis-naive exploratory analysis on a group of 597 individuals who are on a low-carb diet and do not take cholesterol-lowering medications. Our analyses revealed an astonishing inverse relationship between body mass index and LDL cholesterol change upon carbohydrate restriction. It also revealed an inverse relationship between triglyceride to HDL ratio, a marker of metabolic health, and LDL change with carbohydrate restriction. In other words, we observed that leaner people with better metabolic health markers were the ones at risk for increases in LDL. Now, given these surprising results, we then chose to select out individuals with the following triad of markers. LDL greater than or equal to 200 milligrams per deciliter, HDL greater than or equal to 80 milligrams per deciliter, and triglycerides less than or equal to 70 milligrams per deciliter. Cut points that were actually proposed four years ago to compose a theoretical subset of individuals termed lean mass hyperresponders. However, until present, there was no concrete evidence that lean mass hyperresponders existed, nor that individuals passing these three lipid cut points, the metabolic definition of lean mass hyperresponders, were actually any leaner than other persons. But our data showed not only that lean mass hyperresponders existed, but they had an exaggerated low carb lipid triad of very high LDL, very high HDL, and very low triglycerides. Mean levels among lean mass hyperresponders were 300 and 16 milligrams per deciliter for LDL, 99 milligrams per deciliter for HDL, and 47 milligrams per deciliter for triglycerides among 112 lean mass hyperresponder respondents. And importantly, these individuals, though exhibiting large increases in LDL, had normal pre-low-carb diet LDL levels. And finally, true to their name, they were significantly leaner than other participants. Now, the existence of the lean mass hyperresponder phenotype is consistent with the main finding of our paper that, in the context of good metabolic health, lower BMI or leanness is directly related to larger increases in LDL cholesterol observed on a low-carb diet. Finally, we report in this paper on a case series of five patients who were all tested for genetic causes of high LDL and who all tested negative, and demonstrate that high LDL the high LDL phenotype is readily reversible even with moderate reintroduction of carbohydrates on the order of 50 to 100 grams per day and while maintaining a relatively low carbohydrate diet of less than 130 grams per day. All individuals in the case series exhibited substantial decreases of at least 100 milligrams per deciliter LDL with the leanness of lean mass hyperresponders exhibiting a decrease of 400 in 80 milligrams per deciliter LDL from 665 milligrams per deciliter to 185 milligrams per deciliter, all without medication. 
Now, it should be noted that our data are preliminary and purely observational and do not address the safety of low-carbohydrate diets for people with high LDL. Nevertheless, they suggest that lean people who are metabolically healthy are the ones most likely to see substantial increases in LDL on low-carb diets. And conversely, these data imply that those adopting low-carbohydrate diets for obesity or type 2 diabetes, the most prevalent use cases for carbohydrate restriction, have a lower likelihood of experiencing these LDL increases. And this will no doubt be considered great news for individuals with diabetes or obesity and for their physicians. In addition, these findings open up fascinating questions like, why is it that lean, healthy people exhibit increases in so-called bad cholesterol? Doesn't this seem paradoxical? Furthermore, what is the relative risk associated with high LDL among lean mass hyperresponders as compared to those with similar LDL levels due to genetic conditions? These questions will be addressed by upcoming projects. This lean mass hyperresponders paper was just the first domino.